Welcome to the course on ion condors. Ion condors are an advanced time decay strategy. My name is Harry Swaminathan. I'm the founder of OptionTiger.com, a cutting edge options education, trading and mentoring company. I have a bachelor's degree in engineering from India and an MBA from Columbia Business School in New York. We are going to look at iron condors in this course and iron condors are actually one of the most popular strategies amongst options trading experts. In fact, most of the professional traders use iron condors in some form in their, in their mix of strategies. The iron condor is popular for a number of reasons. It's actually one of the most popular strategies and um, we look at the reasons why this is the case. Um, the first is it's a non-directional strategy. So if you've never heard of that term before, a non-directional strategy does not depend on the direction of the stock. So which means you're taking a position and you don't care whether the stock goes up or it goes down. What you only care is the magnitude of the move. And obviously we'll look at the details in this course, but an iron condor is a non-directional strategy. And since it's a non-directional strategy, we're going to introduce another term if you haven't heard that before. And that is, it's going to be a delta neutral strategy at least to begin with. So to begin with, it's going to be a non-directional strategy and a delta neutral strategy. And what do we mean by delta neutral? Since it's a non-directional strategy, you may intuitively come to the conclusion that you don't have either positive deltas or negative deltas. So the position that you're constructing does not have a very high positive delta or a negative delta. So it's somewhere close to zero delta. And that's what we mean by delta neutral to begin with. Now, it the position only starts out as a delta neutral position. As the stock moves over a period of time, you're going to see that deltas are going to move and the deltas are going to change and you're no longer going to remain a delta neutral position. And when your deltas go too far, either on the plus side or the minus side, that's when you have to adjust the strategy. So the basics of an iron condor is that it's constructed from two out of the money credit spreads. So we've got a bear call spread and a bull put spread. So hopefully you've taken the course on advanced credit spreads or credit spreads uh, surgery as we called it. And in that we've covered the credit spreads. So now, if you look at it, this is an advanced uh, strategy. It's composed of two of the out of the money credit spreads. So it's got a bear call on the higher side of the stock and it's got a bull put on the lower side of the stock. So the shape is like a bird with wings and that's why it's called an iron condor. Well, that's why it's called a condor and the word iron means when you use both calls and puts uh, options uh, strategies are generally called iron, uh, iron something, iron this and iron butterflies and iron condors and things like that. So this is an iron condor. It's, it, it looks like a bird and we're going to see that in the next slide. And time decay is your primary income strategy in an iron condor. Your, since you're putting both a bear call and a bull put spread, they are both uh, income generation uh, strategies. They are both time decay strategies and now you're going to benefit from a time decay strategy more than anything else. Now, when you construct the iron condor, now probability and volatility are going to be important considerations. Now, you know probability is definitely going to be an important consideration because probability was an important consideration in both the credit spreads itself. In, just like you had in the bear call and the bull put, you wanted to put probability on the side and so your short strike price was out at below 20, perhaps a 15 delta um, and that's exactly what you have to do here because none of the characteristics of a bear call or a bull put changes. You're just combining the two strategies into one and you're going to get some other benefits out of, con 
out of uh, combining these two strategies and that's what we are going to look at. Now volatility is a very important consideration because you have a negative vega position in both your bear call as well as your bull put. So you have a double negative vega position in an iron condor. So this is the real aspect that you have to watch out for in an iron condor because you have a double negative vega. Therefore, if volatility increases after you put the position, that's going to be hurting you. Now, margin is very favorable and we look at you know exactly what we mean because the iron condor cannot lose on both your sides. It can only lose on one side and therefore you're going to be picking up credit from the other side and you're going to be reducing your margin. Adjustments for an iron condor can be simple and it can be complex also. The, there's a different couple of different ways of doing this. If you wanted to be defensive, you'll buy a long option on the losing side and of course we'll get into the, all of this in detail. I just want to highlight these points here. And if you want to be safe, you can roll the losing side over to the next month. In an iron condor, you have to watch for over adjusting and over trading because the moment the stock runs over to one side, uh, you shouldn't get shaken out and do an adjustment there and then the stock will come back to the middle and then you'll do another adjustment and that's going to be over adjusting and over trading. So you have to watch for over adjusting and over trading. Now you definitely have to look for adjustments because as we know, we can put a strategy but there's no saying what the markets will do. So therefore, you always have to be prepared to adjust and even in an iron condo, we'll be adjusting them. But let's say you put a monthly iron condo strategy. If you find yourself adjusting the iron condo more than two times, then you probably are over adjusting your trade. And therefore, perhaps you did not set up the iron condo uh, properly with the right kind of probability in your favor and that's why uh, you're running into trouble. That's why you're finding the need to over adjust or you're just getting a little too nervous and uh, you're over adjusting. Either way, over adjusting is never a good strategy. So you have to construct your strategy and you have to manage your strategy in such a way that you're not generally adjusting more than a couple of times. All right, let's take a look at what the iron condor looks like on this slide. We're going to consider Apple. Now, Apple may not be exactly at 500, but what we're going to look at is uh, assume that Apple is at 500. And therefore, if you wanted to put a bull put on Apple, and let's say you wanted to put the short strike at 450 and the long strike at 440, so that's a $10 wide spread. And this is a bull put till here. This is a bull put. And the bull put would have continued all the way, but now you're also putting a bear call on the other side and so you know if you put your short strikes approximately equidistant from where Apple is currently trading then you're going to start off as a non-directional and a delta neutral position because you're going to collect a certain positive deltas from your bull put because the bull put is a bullish strategy and you're going to collect a similar amount of negative deltas from your bear call because the bear call is a bearish strategy. So you're going to have negative deltas from this spread. So the two match out and you start off with an approximate zero delta, which is what we call delta neutral. And when we say zero, it, it's never going to be exactly zero. Maybe a few deltas positive, a few deltas negative. That's fine. Depending upon how big the size of your trade is, uh, you'll have to judge that. But you know, you'll basically be arriving at a delta neutral position. And what you'll see is this is your profit zone. This little, it's not a it's a trapezoid if you if you look at uh, the figure, that is your profit zone. So as long as Apple is below 550 and above 450 at the time of expiry, this spread is going to expire worthless. Therefore, you would have collected premium on your bull put, you would have collected premium on your bear call, and you have a double premium on this spread, on this trade. But now, basically, what you're saying is that Apple is going to remain between 450 
and 550 and then you have a little bit of room uh, for your break even. This is your max profit zone between 450 and 550. But you probably have till about 445 to maybe 555 in terms of some profit. And again, you have to manage the position so that Apple either remains in this zone or if Apple makes a big move to one side, then you're going to have to adjust that side. So this is another critical part of the iron condor. And this is why you get double the credit and less margin because by the end of the uh, by the end of uh, the uh, this expiry apple cannot be at 450 and at 550 it can only be at one of these places so one of these spreads is an automatic winner so when you need to adjust you're going to find that you you'll need to adjust only one of these spreads and it'll either be the bull put or the bear call the other one is an automatic winner so now, if you recall the credit spread course, what, what it really comes down to is managing a credit spread. Even though this is an iron condor, it's a four-legged strategy, it's got four options to it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to a credit spread because either you're going to have to adjust the bull put or you're going to have to adjust the bear call. You're, you're, not, going to have, you're not going to find the need to adjust both at the same time. Maybe Apple might go down, you think it's going to hit your uh, bull put and then turn back up and, and, and before expiry, it may try to hit your bear call. But any, at any given one time, it can only be in one place. It's either the bull put or the bear call. And that's what makes this a very powerful strategy. One side is an automatic winner, but you're getting credit on both the bull put as well as the bear call. So your credit is doubled and because your credit is doubled, your margin is going to be less. And because the broker is not going to hold separate margins for the bull put and separate margins for the bear call because the brokers know that you can only lose on one side. So effectively what that happens is you're getting double the credit uh, and less margin. So that's, a, that's the beauty of this uh, strategy. It's a, it's a fantastic strategy. We, I uh, place these uh, uh, iron condors all the time and there are some tips and tricks to it. And the key is you know, when do you adjust? How much do you adjust? And, um, you know, how intense is your adjustment? So, though, you know, those are the kinds of things that we'll have to look into. But overall, it's a very attractive strategy, as you can see, because you're getting double the credit. The probability of success does not change because, you know, let's say you go to a 15 delta here on the 450 short put, and you go to a 15 delta here on the 550 short call. The probability of success for you on this trade is still 85% because it can either go this way or this way first of all and if it goes this way the, the the probability is 15% i mean the probability that it's going to hit that strike is 15% so you generally have an 85% probability of success if you go to the 15 deltas on both sides so it's a very attractive strategy now let's go into the platform and let's try to put on a real iron condor and we'll navigate this trade over a period of three to four weeks. Thank you.